Hi, Dr. Romano. I'm having a lot of trouble with asses and bases for my DAT exam. Do you think you could help me? Sure, come on in. Let's take a look at a really good problem. I made up three questions for my DAT study group on Facebook, and I think they're going to love it. Problem number one and two are easy, and number three is a bear. Problem one, it says the pH of a solution containing one to the minus fourth molar of OH minus ions is blank. This is a sure bet type of question. First thing you're going to do, the minute you hear you have one to the minus four <clears throat> molar of OH minus, that tells us that the pOH of the solution, which is minus the log of one to the minus four, gives me four. So the pOH is going to be four. If the pOH is 4, and we know that 14 minus that number gives me the pH, and that gives me the pH would be 10. So hopefully you can see if the concentration of hydroxide is 1 to the minus 4 molar, minus the log of that gives me my pOH, subtract it from 14, because pH and pOH collectively equal 14. That was an easy one. We want to consider the dihydrogen arsenate anion, H2ASO4. This is a sure bet, easy question on the DAT. And I say to you, what would be the conjugate acid? So the conjugate acid of this, we simply add an H. And that would give me H3ASO4. For the conjugate base, I'm going to remove an H. And every time you remove an H, it should be an AS, sorry about that. So that should be and we put in two minuses. So we get H A S O4 minus minus. So the rule is when we add an H, we get rid of a negative. When you remove an H, you put in an extra negative. All right, those two are straightforward. <clears throat> now Here's the hard one. I want you to consider two buffers. One, I give you this buffer of carbonic acid and the bicarbonate anion. And here you have the dihydrogen phosphate and the monohydrogen phosphate system and the pKa is a given. 6.4 and 7.2 respectively. Now at 6.4, what are the relative amounts? <clears throat> now, the minute you see 6.4, that puts me at the pKa of the first buffer system. So if you're at the pKa, that means that the concentrations are equal. So the H2CO3 concentration is equal to the HCO3 minus concentration. So you're going to get 50 and 50, and that's going to be a great buffer, because you're exactly at the pKa, and you got half in the protonated form and half on in the deprotonated form. Now, here's the tricky one. How about now this buffer? Now, I'm going to show you a nice little trick on how to do this. If the pKa is 7.2, why don't we place the number 7.2 right above the arrow? And now you can kind of cheat. Anything below that number would favor this. Anything above this would favor this. So, for instance, if you were at a pH of 11, that would put me to the right, and that means that you would get a greater amount of HPO4 minus minus than H2PO4 minus. Well, you're at 6.4, so that would put you to the left. So that would mean the concentration of the dihydrogen phosphate anion would be greater than the concentration of the monohydrogen phosphate anion. So there you have it. You would have equal amounts of the two species here. And in the second one, the predominant species would be the H2PO4 minus at its pH of 6.4. Um, I hope that helps you on two or three problems that could easily land in the DAT that I think is challenging. I was actually going to put problem number three in the Destroyer book, but I decided to share it with you and do it live. All right, good day to you. Thank you, Dr. Romano. You're very welcome. Bye-bye.